That's it. I'm turning you into a robot. So I don't know if that's showing up on video, but all of these body components for the toy come out to about 87 grams, which is a little heavier than I'd like it to be. Uh, I do have to fit two drive motors, a battery, a receiver, and a servo inside of this, and speed controllers, of course. But there are some places I can lighten it down. This whole middle section here can come out. It just seems like it might be press fit or something. I don't want to force it too much and risk breaking the upper jaw. So I'm just gonna drop it on the ground and then cut this part out. Uh, this middle tray, honestly, is only going to exist up to a point. It may not exist at all, to be quite honest. I might just use these two pieces and then kind of rebuild a hinge system just to allow that upper jaw to... Actually, I guess it kind of slots in there. So it may just be this upper body part which, let's see, those two pieces together are 62, so that's a lot better, but there's really not a whole lot that's going to come out of that, so we shall see how this goes. So this little guy right here, as you kind of saw at the beginning of this video, is going to become my new 150 gram robot. This is kind of what I'm going to use as a replacement, uh, replacement's a loose term, but for uh, Gorgor, because that had the little toy dinosaur head on top of it that, you know, was able to grab things and it had lifting jaws. This isn't going to have the lifting jaws on it. It's just a little too much to fit into this weight class. But I am going to make it chomp other robots. Uh, the big inspiration for this is the Crave Monster, the cereal box fighting robot. And he put his plans up on YouTube. I'll link to them below. He basically walks you through step by step how he made it. He made two of them in the one pound weight class, so it was a multi-bot with two of them, so I figured it wouldn't be that hard to kind of reduce things even further, those were very big robots, and then just reduce it down to a small size and build the UK ant out of it. So the hardest part I think really is going to be fitting everything inside the body of this toy. This is a uh, knockoff, it's a double knockoff, it is a bootleg Godzilla figure, or a Godzilla thing. And it is also a knockoff of the game Crocodile Dentist. Uh, I was looking for that, just the normal game on Amazon, and I saw a bunch of the ripoff ones. And then this guy popped up in the listings, and I'm a lifelong Godzilla fan, and I knew I had to go with it. So this is where we're starting, and we'll see how it ends up. So in ripping off Crave Monster completely, I went out, got some foam board. That's going to be the structural components of this thing. It seemed to hold up all right for him against one pounder, so I'm hoping against 150 gram bots it'll be okay. And then I have very poorly printed out his motor mounts for a little, uh, I think he had cheaper ones, but yeah, the, I don't know, micro gear motors you get on Robot Marketplace or Servo City or all those places. I think mine are the little slower ones and the ones I want to be using, but I'm just going to use what I have on hand for now and I can go back later and buy more expensive parts or more parts or whatever if I want. But I'm going to run it off 7 volts, just one of the LiPo batteries that used to power a little demon. Uh, I have also considered making it a shuffle bot. Um, you get like, I think, a 50% weight advantage in most events around here. But I'm going to try making it wheeled first and get everything to fit in that, and hopefully I can make that happen, because that'd just be easier. So all broken down, this is most of the parts inside of this toy. There were a couple extra pieces, but I'm going to be using only really the two pieces here at the top, the body shell bit and then the upper jaw. I will be using this lower piece to kind of trace out and make my template for how big this underplate's going to be that holds all the electronics. And I might steal some of the teeth out of this lower jaw. I was kind of thinking it would be funny to have them, like, 
poorly glued into the mouth so that as it gets hit by other robots, it loses teeth around the arena. I don't think that would be entanglement, because, I don't know, they're kind of big to tangle up a 150 gram bot. But I just think it would be kind of funny the robot lost teeth as it went along. It is funny because I was looking at the reviews on Amazon and a lot of them were saying that it broke the first time they used it and would never reset the jaw again. When I was filming my little intro to this video, I tested the jaw several times and it worked pretty consistently, so I guess maybe I got one of the few working ones. Which makes it kind of a shame that I tore it apart, but it has to be done. So my plan would be to put the motor mount somewhere kind of like this, so that the motor would sit uh, maybe a little further in than that, I guess. But then the wheel will actually be coming out of the footwell of the, of the toy. So you have the foot right there. Obviously it's reversed, but the wheel would kind of be coming out the center of this. And then it would kind of still keep the look that it has legs. But just looking at this, I can tell you it's going to be a really, really tight fit. Getting two of these motors, a battery, and a servo in here is going to be really tight. And you can see the motor mount doesn't even necessarily fit inside of this frame. So the motor mount's going to have to get cut down a little bit as well. It's going to get cut down here in the front. And then kind of that back corner of it's got to go as well. So it's going to bring it to a pretty small size when all said and done. Not really much of a base plate. And I picked this with the black paper on it to give it some looks, but I think I'm just going to end up having to paint everything because this paper is garbage. So after a little bit of work, this is the state of the, the buy. I still haven't figured out what I want to call this thing yet, but I decided instead of using that foam base plate, I would actually use the plastic bottom from the toy. Uh, that gave me a bolt I could use to kind of hold the top armor on, which is much appreciated. <laughs> it makes it easier than trying to figure out how to hold the foam into the body and make it removable. But I'm still looking. I don't know where the servos went that I'm planning to use for this. So right now the head is just resting on there. But I do have the drive motors kind of glued in place. They are sticking out through the feet as I wanted them to be, which I like a lot. I added a couple of foam bits up here at the front. More or less sacrificial or just there to kind of you know, try to capture a robot inside the mouth. I glued in some of the teeth like I was talking about. So as it stands right now, I'm gonna have to reposition the teeth a little bit, but the jaw should come down, clamp on the other robot, and I should be able to drag them around at least a little bit. So it's it's getting there. I still have to wire everything up and kind of finalize everything and get the servo in there for sure, but there's uh, definitely progress on it. So all the components are wired into Son of Gorgor. Now I just gotta actually make everything fit inside of the robot and bind a receiver that should actually live with it. So I need to readjust the front wedge, but more or less Son of Gorgor is complete. So you got the chomping jaws, got the big wide kind of dustpan wedge in the front, and it drives. So uh, pretty much all you could ask for. The dinosaur, it chomps things. Oh, and it's underweight, so I could add some extra stuff. Actually, I already added a little bit of extra stuff, so it may be at weight now, but it, it all fits. It's ready to go.